So my name is Meredith Edwards, and I love offering creative inspiration based on spiritual principles and really practical ways. Meaning, how do we take these philosophies or these truths, these wisdoms, and bring it down to earth so that we can use it on an everyday basis, so that we can actually implement it into our lives. Um, and that's what conscious creativity is all about because we are always creating our lives every day, whether we are conscious of it or not. So the conscious part is just about having some awareness, having some uh, presence, because pre awareness is presence, to what you're doing, why you're doing it, how you're doing it, how you're showing up, how you're feeling, which just allows us to connect to ourselves, which allows us to connect to each other, which allows us to connect to our mission in the world, which allows us to lead more fulfilled lives. So that's kind of the fundamentals of it. Welcome, welcome if you're just joining. So, Today is an exciting day because it is the opening night, the launch of the Joyful Vampire Tour of America. So that might sound ridiculous. <laughs> it is, I think, in a good way. Um, the Joyful Vampire Tour of America is a 51 screening, 40 city, three month, one RV tour of the feature film Bite Me that I directed. Bite Me is a romantic comedy about a real life vampire and the IRS agent who audits her and her vampire church. And it's a really sweet story about um, love and acceptance and hope, you know, those really basic, simple truths. But when you get down to it, that's what it's all really about. Um, and about how, to, how we come together despite our differences, despite our insecurities, despite our judgments um, with one another and with ourselves and how we can all learn from that. But it's a really sweet story, really fun story. And tonight, Actually, right now, while I'm speaking to you, the film is playing um, for the first uh, opening night of the tour. We've screened it a couple other times at film festivals, but this is like the first release, public release of the film, to a sold out house in New York at the Wythe Hotel, which is actually a beautiful, fancy hotel um, in my old hood in my sweet Williamsburg, Brooklyn. I lived in Williamsburg for 10 years. The, ho the whole time that I lived in New York, I lived in Williamsburg. So my heart is there with them and I wanted to get on live during this time too to send some good energy, some good vibrations to them um, because I couldn't be there because I have some other, I live in LA now and I have some other obligations. I wasn't able to be there live tonight, but my spirit is there and I'm just imagining it and I know it's gonna be a fun and joyful night. So we are independently distributing the film. Um, so we're going rogue, which is funny because with indie film, so many people make independent films, meaning they raise the funds themselves. They, uh, they do everything themselves on their own. That's independently um, making a film. But yet, we don't have any model where we independently distribute. We're always looking for higher ups, companies, the man to do it for us. And so there's a disconnect there. So we took it upon ourselves and um, in our own hands. And my producers, um, producers of the film, Naomi McDougall Jones and Sarah Wharton, have been amazing. I'm so proud of them and inspired by them and mesmerized by them. Um, they have produced this tour. And so we're going on a three month tour all throughout the US, 51 screenings, 40 cities over three months. And we're starting in New York because it's a New York film. We shot it in New York. It's got that New York spirit. And tonight's the opening night. Um, so it's, I feel so 
excited and grateful and proud. Um, I went into production on this film in the summer of 2017. So it's been a long, and it was going on for much longer than that. You know, there's so, there's so much that happens in the duration of an indie film and in any creative project. There's such a, there's a process, right? Um, and it has taken its own crazy journey and adventure. Uh, and I just feel so grateful that this is where it's landed. And I feel like this is just a beginning also. So I can't wait to see what happens with it. We are, we've also um, released the film digitally. You can pre-order on iTunes today to get it tomorrow. It's already streaming live on Seed and Spark which is an amazing platform for independent filmmakers. I think you can stream it for like $2 on Seed and Spark. Um, and it will be available tomorrow on Amazon and Google Play also. So check out bitemethefilm.com for screenings. It's a super fun movie. And after every screening, there's going to be a vampire ball uh, in which Everyone is encouraged to dress up and let your weird light shine, 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 shine. Um, so my live today is inspired by this journey because I was thinking about the creative process as I always am, conscious creativity. And I was thinking about, and just, we were, I was, just reflecting, we were reflecting today with the team and thinking about how far we've come and um, how far we've yet to go still. And it got me just reflecting on the main things that, in my experience, you need for a creative project to succeed. So whether that's an indie film like Bite Me, whether that's a play, whether that's a, a book you're writing, whether that's a house you're trying to manifest, whether it's a small business, whether it's a big business, whether it's a relationship. You know, we're, we're always creating our lives. We have so much choice and, there's, and choice is power. So we have so much power to create our lives. Um, and I was thinking about like, especially when you're in a, in a big project that's hard, that's scary, that's uh, there's no definite um, outcome. What are the things that you need in order for it, for it to succeed? And I've this is my third r really big project that I have directed from the ground up. The first was a multimedia play that I did in New York that was over four years. Um, and we ended up having a month and a half long release at the Living Theater, which is um, a very well-known uh, theater in New York, theater collective, anarchist collective. They were really big in the 60s and 70s. We had a, my production company had an artist residency there. And then the next one was another independent film called Imagine I'm Beautiful. That was, uh, I think that was another four years. Um, maybe for me at that point, I didn't write that. I didn't co-create that like I did the first multimedia play. Um, so maybe that was three, two or three years for me. And then, then with Bite Me, it's now been over two years. Um, and these are projects that I've, I've directed from the ground up. And so I, I have a lot of experience with how to take something from conception to completion. And for me, that's, you know, whatever the completion stage is for you, you um, might not always know what it's gonna be until you get there. Um, but I was thinking about three things that have helped me uh, in my reflection and from coaching other creatives and from being a part of many creative projects. What are three things that you need to have a successful creative project? Three things. What do you think they are? And I came up with the three that uh, most resonate with me and they kind of house other things. Um, and I'm sure there's lots of things that can make a creative project successful, but these are the three that I'm going to share with you today. The 
the first one is, it starts with a P. You might think it's presence because I talk about that a lot, but it's not. It's perseverance. Perseverance. So perseverance is the courage and the strength to keep going, to stand tall, despite all the conflicts and despite the bumps in the road and despite the hurricanes, the downright earthquakes that come along in your creative project because they will come, they will come. And you might think you're on a clear trajectory and then all of a sudden a hailstorm comes and just puts you on another path. And that's a part of the process and you have to roll with it. So the perseverance is the strength and durability to keep going, to keep fighting. You're also going to get a lot, of, a lot of haters and a lot, of, a lot of naysayers. Because when you have the courage to stand up and create something that's really freaking hard, other people get jelly and it makes them uncomfortable because they're not doing it. Um, so that's when you get a lot of critics and people come in and don't like it or for whatever, it doesn't matter the reason. Um, and you get people who just aren't on your page, you get people that just don't agree or just don't see eye to eye and that's okay, that's normal. Um, but but especially if it's coming from your heart and it's, a, it's like a passion project or a project that you feel very um, deeply connected to, it can really tear you down, especially in those early stages when you're just starting to dive into it and you're nervous and you're scared and you might be talking to your friends about it or to your colleagues or trying to find people to work with. Um, a lot of times creative projects, we have colleagues and teammates. Um, so the perseverance is the, the will and the drive and the courage and the strength to keep going. I coach and talk to so many people, creatives, artists, people who as soon as they, you know, even their own inner critic gets in their head and they stop, they stop going because they don't have the confidence or they feel like they don't have the, the, the will to keep going. And so the perseverance is the, like the backbone that will keep you going. So put on your rain jacket, put on your helmet, put on your boots and take a deep breath and keep walking. Perseverance, perseverance, perseverance. That's number one. Because it gets hard. I can tell you, it was like on my second, my first feature, um, we were promised all this equipment from someone. Great, because we it was a low budget. It was like $80,000, which is extremely low for a feature film. And we were promised equipment from a, a friend uh, and something happened and he pulled out and we, we didn't have that equipment anymore. And this is like a week or something before production day one of production so talk about like a hailstorm but we rolled with the punches and it ended up being that our gaffer was able to gave us all of his equipment because he has he had his own truck and his own equipment and we had we, then we were able to get even better equipment at an even better cost and then he was able to help us in another way and for, for his career too, he ended up becoming an associate producer on it because of that. And so it all worked out for the better. Um, and so you can't let those storms get you down. You have to persevere. And that leads me to number two, which is, starts with a D. <laughs> Guess what it is. There's some interesting comments here. Devotion. Devotion. So devotion, I wrote a lot of some notes earlier. So I was just journaling about it. So devotion. Devotion is the time and talent and energy spent because it's 
something that you love. And so you're devoted to it. So it's coming from a place of heart and love. And that's, this also inspiration falls under this house of devotion because in order to be devoted to something, I believe you must be inspired by it, inspired in spirit, connected, devoted. And it comes from a place of like, it's like a deeper place to be devoted to something. We talk about being devoted in our marriage, um, in, our, our, in our spiritual practice, um, devoted to that which we care about on a deep level. So there's a, a spirit of love and a spirit of deep connection. And you must be devoted to your, pro- to your project. Because if you're not, who else is going to be? And so this is how, like, where do you think the time and energy and effort comes from? It comes from that place of devotion. It comes from the love. I mean, maybe it's just love, but the devotion is the act of giving, giving your time and giving your energy and giving your effort. And because you love it, you're getting it, you're getting that love back because you love it, you know? And so you must be devoted. And that's that's where consistency comes in and that's where showing up every day, just like a relationship, like a marriage. You're devoted to that person. You show up for them every day. You show up for them through thick and thin, through sickness and health, right? So you almost have to treat your creative project like a marriage, like a relationship. Um, otherwise it fizzles out like a marriage, like a relationship. <laughs> Devotion, the time, the talent, the effort that's sourced from a place of love. And each of the three big projects that I named that I have been a part of from conception to completion and other creative projects, um, you know, I have a small business. Uh, I manifested my dream home. That was kind of like a creative project. Um, I've created lots of other, I'm creating in the midst of creating an online course right now. And all of that, I'm devoted to all of it because I'm inspired by it and because I love it. And so I am able to put in a lot of time and talent and energy from, I'm able to devote that energy to it. And I think in order to be devoted to your project, you you it's your responsibility to find a way to stay inspired by it, to stay connected to it. And the last one starts with an F. We've had perseverance, we've had devotion. My last uh, thing that I believe you need to have for a successful creative project, regardless of what it is, starts with an F, is faith. Is faith. Thanks, zombie yoga. Faith. So this is kind of the part where it's not really in your control, where you surrender and trust the higher gods and goddesses, creative gods and goddesses, uh, that have your back because let me tell you again I'm speaking from just my experience from the three projects that I've the three the three like big ones that have taken years of my life that I've done um, and think about you know as I'm talking think about your projects your business your relationships your family uh, your babies are like creative projects I mean you created created them and then it's a project you you work with them <laughs> um, I have seen that I one of the one of my favorite parts about the creative process is watching the project take on a life a creative life of its own where I'm not really in control anymore. It's like it's like grows and it like 
gains its its own heart its own heartbeat and its own legs and its own eyes and mind and it kind of and then it's like you're in con- like like a freaking baby like a real life baby and then you're and kind of as as a director the project manager or the leader of the of the project you're directing it you're steering it um but there comes a point when you kind of surrender to the higher greater good of the project especially when it's there's a big mission involved or there's a lot of people involved and it's not all about you you know and there usually is that and so faith is the ability to trust and surrender control in order to support the bigger mission of the project. And that can be hard to do, right? I know it's hard to do for a lot of other film directors. So you gotta have faith, Limp Biscuit style. Um, And without that, it can be really challenging. And and that's why I think this is kind of like a perfect triad. The perseverance, the devotion, and the faith kind of create this perfect triad because perseverance is kind of your will to keep going. And the devotion is is that which is like flowing through you from heart, from spirit. And then the faith is like giving it up to the higher powers. And when you have a big mission, when you have a big creative project, or you feel called or inspired to, to create something, that thing is born and, ha- and has a mission on its own. You know? And you got to work with it. Perseverance, devotion, faith. Three things that you need for a successful creative project. And it's not, they're not always easy, but if you maintain those three things and check in with those three things through your through creating your pro- project and through your process, through the entire process, it'll kind of keep you in a ch- in, in, in check and balanced. So for a little sacred space, I invite you to close your eyes. We'll just do a short one today because I spoke a lot. And if you can, close your eyes with me now. And just take a few deep breaths. Come into your body, into your present moment. Tune into your senses. If anything, you can just let this be a breath of fresh air. A moment to pause. This is where creative flow exists in the present moment. So just try to soften your body and detach from any thought or judgment. And you can just allow this to be a creative exploration, free from expectation, free from judgment. And so I invite you to tune into something that you are creating right now or that you want to create. And again, this could be some sort of project or just something as simple as I'd like to do this for myself. I would like to eat healthier or whatever it is for you. We just had a new moon recently, and so that divine feminine energy is is billowing, it's building. And so it's a good time to set intentions for yourself if you haven't yet. But maybe there's some sort of creative project you have in mind or some sort of mission in the world or something that maybe calls on you or nudges you or you think about a little bit. 
Um, maybe it's a relationship, maybe it's a family, maybe it's a new home, maybe it's to just create for create creation's sake, to, to paint, to draw, to write. Um, you know, creating art is a form of healing and it's a very therapeutic, um, relaxing thing to do. Maybe it's just to create some sacred space for yourself, which you're doing right now if you're here, if you're still here. And so tune into whatever that is. And just stick to one thing. There might be a few things that come into mind. And then I want you to ask yourself, what would it look like to persevere in this journey, in this creative process? How, what does it look like to show up to this creative project with strength and courage and the will to keep going despite the storms, despite the failures and mistakes that will inevitably come? So you might see yourself standing up to those things. Maybe there's something in your life right now that's getting in the way of your creative process, of your creative project, whether it's money or time or a person, a relationship, or your own inner critic or creative blocks. See yourself persevering through it. So see yourself standing strong and tall and courageous, putting your boots on and walking through it anyway because you persevere, even when it's hard, even when no one else believes. And let's take a deep breath in and out. And staying with this same project, now I want you to see, tune into what does it look like to be really devoted to this thing, to really give from your heart and soul the time and energy and effort that it needs, that it needs to come alive, that it needs to stay alive, that it needs to be healthy. And what does that look like? How are you showing up? How are you investing your time, energy, and, and talents? And how are you staying inspired? What does it look like to be devoted? And can you commit to being devoted? And if not, what's standing in your way and how might you persevere through it? Devotion. From inspiration and heart and love, the greatest force of all. And let's take a deep breath in and out. And now invite in some faith. Invite in some faith. So you might see yourself surrendering and trusting in the process. You might come up with a little prayer or mantra that helps you remember to trust and surrender to the creative process and the higher powers that be. What does having faith look like to you? And how does that change how you show up in this process? And together here, we'll take a closing breath, inhale, and exhale. Perseverance. 
devotion, and faith. If you'd like a little bit more sacred space time, and if you haven't yet, tune into my spring flower meditation because it is springing, which is all about what is aching to bloom and expand and what's what are you excited to create this cycle spring is the season of creation new life new beginnings vivid color and life and fertility spring perseverance devotion faith three things that you need for a creative project to succeed. Those are three things that I really leaned on in the three projects that I've been a part of and they are the things that I continue to lean on every day, really. When I am in a, when I'm aligning with my bigger mission in the world. So, thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.